So, does Loki kick into gear again? Because last week's episode of Lamentis was highly enjoyable, but still, it was, as I called it, a pit stop episode, and we only got three episodes left, so we're probably going to pick up the pace, we're probably going to see a lot of things unfold in this fourth episode, and... Yes, there's a lot to take in. Hi fellow Disney Plus watchers, this is Thoughts After Disney Plus Watch, where we review everything new Disney Plus coming out, and I'm glad you're watching. This episode I think is amazing. I love how it moves both the plot to great lengths and is a, is a character changing event for Loki. I think I've never seen this much character development for Loki in both movies or past episodes. It truly is fantastic how much he learns about himself and better yet slowly changes his whole belief system because of the circumstances he's in. Just so you know, I will be going into spoilers from here on out, so we're so far into the show that I I don't want to restrain myself talking about Loki episode 4. Great, still here, here we go. We have to talk about that opening scene where all my expectations were completely turned around as we got to see the timekeepers in all their mighty glory in this beautiful looking temple. And oh my god, I got a little too excited actually. Exactly this is why Marvel Studios is so great. I got such a strong reaction out of seeing the timekeepers, but I never picked up a comic about them. I didn't know they are a thing before watching this show, but here we are. I'm pooping my pants seeing these mystical beings that all these characters were talking about for so long. And you know, they look so great too. I really felt like I was sitting in a theater watching this because it feels so big. It feels like it's worthy to see in an IMAX theater. That's how grand in scope this felt to me. It also felt a bit like seeing Palpatine for the first time. Finally seeing this mysterious villainous figure we've heard so much about. And then we learn that they're androids and that there's a force behind this that we still don't have a clue about. And this was great because in a way this felt like a mid-season finale on its own. And now it's once again raising the stakes by completely putting the TVA in a state of chaos, tearing the ones working at the organization apart, tearing Loki and Sylvie apart, and now the secret that everyone's a variant in is, is out in the open. This episode manifested chaos. And now we have a better idea of what Sylvie's whole goal is, and it's kind of become a revenge story. I, I like that we got to see some flashback over it, although I do have to say it was needlessly confusing for a minute, because my first thought was, is this another Loki variant? She obviously has brown hair and Sylvie's got blonde hair. I guess it happens that hair color changes after childhood. I know it's not a big deal, but I think they could have avoided letting us, or, well, I speak for myself, me being slightly confused for a few minutes. Another thing that slightly confused me was why did Sylvie and um, let's call her B15 for lack of a better name go to that rocks card shopping mall again? Now I know going to one of these catastrophe events above anything else makes sense, not messing with time and all, so I get the location in isolation but Loki didn't have any problem talking about the fact that the TVA agents are all variants to Mobius. Why did they go here to talk exactly? And then Sylvie shows B15 some of her memories, which is a sweet moment but they talk talk about Sylvie having showed B-15 her memories before and that too confused me for a moment. It wasn't until after I saw the episode, went back to episode 2 and looked at what she did in the mall, well that talking about that moment Sylvie, disguised as that Roxcart employee, took her out using her powers and I guess we are expected to remember that as her showing B-15 her past. I know I didn't. It's just these small moments of confusion, this scene at Roxcart for example could have used just a little small flashback to freshen up our memory but okay, it's not a big deal, it's just that this episode had me unnecessarily being in the dark about some stuff. Some moments were needlessly confusing, to be honest. For me, that's it. I loved everything else. Mobius' first words to Loki are, I know you got some quip you're dying to say, and this felt like coming home, this first line already. I didn't even realize how much I loved these two together, but it felt special to have these two characters together once again. One of the core moments of this week's chapter was also just the two of them sitting down and having this conversation about Loki. Mobius slowly realizing Loki is falling in love with a version of himself, then Loki confronting Mobius about his human life, just so much important character work being done. And oh my god, the writing in this show is so good, because what I didn't even realize until I started to collect my thoughts and writing down notes is, what created this Nexus event on Lamentis? What what happened? I thought we were gonna find out within, you know, the next few episodes, not within this episode. Like, this was something that would be revealed in one of the coming two episodes, I thought. Lamentis was on the verge of completely getting destroyed, so there shouldn't be a Nexus event. What happened? But now I realize it's probably because of Loki and Sylvie falling in love. You know that saying, or I don't know if you can really call it a saying, but when I'm with him or her, I can see my whole future, or something like that. I think this show is playing with the idea that the moment Loki and Sylvie began to fall for each other, or themselves, or it's, it's messed up, that specific moment created the Nexus event because of their love, or let's call it attraction for now. What else could it be, right? Let me know in the comments, did you realize this too? Is it really obvious or am I being a genius here? I'm not quite sure. I would love to be right about this because this is such a brilliant way to directly link the ongoing plot 
and Loki's character work. Loki falling in love with someone who he can possibly fall in love with because it's himself or herself, stop confusing me, while creating an alternate timeline in the process is such a wacky, emotional and brilliant approach and I adore this show making time travel such a philosophical journey instead of a cheap plot device. I adore that this show is making such clever narrative decisions while still keeping us in the dark what the ultimate endgame will be, who's behind all of this, that kind of stuff. That post credit scene by the way had me wondering. And in case you missed it, pause the video, go watch that first because this could be really big. Okay, so these three characters who find Loki there are quite obviously versions of Loki. I think that is the way they're going. And in the background, we see New York being completely destroyed. Could this be another New York being destroyed by the alien invasion of the Avengers in 2012? And these are all the versions who made it happen? So when a Loki gets obliterated like Tom Hiddleston's, do they come to this place? Is this a version of what could happen to New York? I believe this is the way they're going. Are all these Lokis we're going to meet very who got away with the Tesseract? Are we going to see like a war of Lokis of some sort? My head is running wild with theories and normally I don't even like to theorize too much, I just want to experience it all, but in this case I can't help it. This show is getting to the point where it's intriguing in a way WandaVision was and if it keeps this crescendo up, it's gonna be hard to say which is better. I wanna wrap this up real soon, but first, if you're new and one that can get enough of Disney+, Plus, this is the only channel that's specifically and absolutely only Disney+, Plus thoughts and reviews. Episode per episode, we all watch together. You'll have an idea on what to expect, so click that button and that bell if you wanna follow along, thank you so much. I'm thinking about wrapping this up. If you're interested in thoughts on previous episodes, it's all in the description or you can browse the channel page. Did you like this video? Then all it takes is to click that blue little hand down there. Thanks. I will be here this Friday covering the Mysterious Benedict Society and the Bad Batch. Thanks so much for watching. For now, have a wonderful day and see ya.